Good morning and welcome to Scott Cooks. That's right, good morning. It's a little before 8 o'clock a.m. here, Eastern Standard Time. And why am I cooking this early? We're going to be using the Ninja Foodie today to do some slow cooking. Cross-cut beef shank with a reduced red wine beef broth sauce. It's going to be amazing. It's going to cook all day. I'm excited. Let's get started. Let's go over some of the ingredients. You're going to need some olive oil. You're going to need an entire bottle of wine. Now mine's got a little missing in it, but uh, hey, it's pretty full. Cheap wine, nothing special. You're going to need some balsamic vinegar. Uh, this is a custom blend that actually is made with figs. Very, very good. You're going to need beef broth, four cups of it. You're going to need about 10 garlic cloves. Can you see those? Yeah. Gonna need a couple medium onions. Uh, I keep everything in Tupperware, you know that. So these are some bay leaves. You're gonna need just one good sized bay leaf. So we'll, we'll pick a big one out of here when we get ready. And of course, you're gonna need your beef shank. Okay. Beef shank, let me flip that over for you. It's got two bones in it. It's a cross cut. So you know what that means. So first thing we're gonna do is get this foodie hot and we're going to heat up some oil in the foodie. Turn your foodie on sear saute medium high. Pour in about a tablespoon or so of some good oil. I'm using um, olive right now. And we're going to let that oil get hot. We want that oil hot before we drop this um, beef shank in there. Make sure you get yourself a platter out because after we sear the beef, the beef shank, we're going to take it back out for a few minutes while we do something else. So have yourself a platter and some tongs hand, stand, hand standing by. Now one of the tricks to getting a really good sear on any piece of meat is to pat it dry before you put it into the oil. So I'm just taking a regular old paper towel here. <clears throat> now... This is uh, mine separated at the bone when I took it out. <clears throat> Pretty normal for such a large piece. And of course, we're not going to be able to get this completely dry, but we're going to get uh, a little bit of moisture off of it that we can. That's better than when we started. I'm going to lightly season. Just use your favorite seasoning, you know mine. Salt and pepper would work just as well here. I'm not going to go crazy with it because we're going to put a little more of this in later. And um, now I do like to press down on that before I flip it. It's really just so I don't lose it all. So a lot more flavoring is going to go in this. So this is just a little bit to help get it started. That oil is hot, so we are going to go right into the foodie with this. For the sear. Now these do have bones in them. If you do buy a cross cut beef shank, you're going to get bones. That's the way it is. So be careful when you drop it in the foodie because you don't want to scratch your pot with the bone. So put it in gently and set yourselves a timer and we're going to go seven minutes on each side. Don't move them. Don't shuffle them around. Let them sit. We're going for this really good sear here guys. Seven minutes each side. I do want to mention on the previous step when I said sear them for seven minutes each side I did drop the temperature to medium. Um, we don't want to burn these, we're just going to sear them. So the medium high was to get the oil hot, and then I dropped it to medium for seven minutes on each side. And I'm, even through this mic, where I'm standing, you can probably hear it uh, sizzling pretty heavy over there. We're going to go ahead and break down the onions and garlic. These can be rough cut, 
because they're going to go in the slow cooker for the rest of the day so you know they're just going to break down anyway so we're going to rough cut two medium sized onions I always find it easier to peel the skin off after I quarter them, less to deal with. And we're rough cutting anyway, so it doesn't matter. Not trying to get some pretty slices or something out of it. All right, and this is what I mean by a rough cut. A couple of them, a couple of them. And that's cut. So we just toss it all over in a bowl. Make sure you stand back so your eyes don't water. Because <laughs> some of these onions get right rough. Alright, that's one of them. I do like cooking with onions, y'all. Coming up on the first seven minutes, by the way. So I'll be flipping those in just a few minutes. I do have my tongs out, handy, ready to go. All right, we got a little problem on the side of that one. Let's cut some of that away. Here we go. Good enough. Alright, we're gonna flip these in a sec and then we're gonna do the garlic. Let's do some flipping. That's the sear we're looking for. See that? Beautiful. Again, don't forget you got a bone in here, guys. Flip gently, don't scratch your pot. All right, we're going another seven. Still on medium. Let's break down some garlic. All right, everybody's got a million ways to do everything, but I'm gonna show you the easiest way in the world to peel these, these garlic and, and cut them up. Snip the ends, okay? Snip the ends. Take a blade, um, something wide. Lay it on top, use your hand, smash it. There you go. That's it. Garlic peeled, just like that. That's all you got to do, y'all. You don't got to be crazy and picking at it and all that stuff. I'm going to do it again so you know I didn't just make that up. This garlic does not look so hot. We will not be using that one. I'll grab another clove here in a second. Snip the ends. You don't want to cook with those anyway. They don't taste good. Let's make sure I'm on the camera. Flat blade. Hand. Using this part. Smash. Skin. Literally just fell off. There it went. Okay. Let's cut some garlic. Again with the rough cut. I do have a garlic press, but I do not need to press these. Because again, the slow cook will take care of that for me. I'm just going to break them down. Throw them right over in the bowl with that garlic. And we'll be cooking those down here shortly. I'm going to stop talking because I'm probably going to fast forward this part because i got a lot to do. There you go. We've got a couple more minutes before we're going to pull those 
beef shanks out and start on our sauce and we'll be slow cooking here very shortly let me do a little cleanup all right guys it's seven minutes per side I'm gonna go ahead and remove them these will be going back in shortly these are not fully cooked of course these are just seared on each side got a nice sear going on there we're gonna leave the foodie on medium we're gonna go ahead and put in the onions and garlic that we just finished cutting up I'm gonna cook these down so that's going to be about, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Just trying to get a little color to the onion. Onions and garlic are done. Looking great smelling great it's time for 750 milliliters of red wine your choice does not have to be a crazy expensive wine to something that you enjoy the taste of a little at a time until we drop that temperature a little bit because uh, we had that pretty hot there we go go ahead and just add that in And we're going to throw in four cups of beef broth. I'm going to use this one. I used this in another recipe a few days ago. I really liked it. This has a really nice flavor. Um, it's from Swanson, but I'm not promoting this one. I'm just saying use a good quality beef broth. And I'm even going to measure it for you. I don't know why, because I know how much is in here. But, uh, <laughs> funny. Alright, so there's two cups going in. So that was that. So that's uh, 32 ounces. All right. Add a little more seasoning to the mix. Whatever you guys like. You know what I like. In case you don't. Voila. Again, not promoting this, but highly suggesting it. All right. Go ahead and crank your foodie up. You remember, we're on sear saute. Sometimes it's better to just show it. So we're on sear saute medium. We're going to move this to high and we're going to start the boil. Once we get a boil going, we're going to drop the temperature to medium. We're going to let this simmer for about 20 minutes. Then we'll add the meat back in, start to pressure cook. I couldn't find a really large bay leaf, so I got these two small ones. And uh, it's fine to just go ahead and throw those in right now too. And uh, just take your tongs or whatever you got and submerge them. Get them down in there. Okay, that's it. See you when we get a boil going. Oops, how could I forget one of the best parts? I almost forgot the balsamic vinegar. Uh, you only need, oh my gosh, I wish you could smell. I wish you could smell this. This was made with figs. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to take two tablespoons of this today. Look how thick that is. Oh, it's like it's like syrup, it's like fig syrup. You can just pour this in cereal or something. Oh gosh, I hate to finish using this bottle up. This is hard to get. I had this custom made for me, but I can do it again. This is what I had it made for. Recipes like this. It's so good. I'm gonna eat that. Oh my goodness. It's like candy, guys. It's like candy. 
if you can find it somewhere or have it made for you in one of those shops that do specialty oils and vinegars, give it a shot. So our boil has just started, as you can see. It doesn't take too long in the foodie. And once we get the full boil going on, we're going to drop this to medium. Just let it do a simmer for um, about 20 minutes. And how do you know when it's a full boil? When I can do this and it's still boiling, that's a full boil. So if you can stir it and it still boils while you're stirring, that's a full boil. And we're pretty close. Will it boil while I'm stirring? Almost. Very close. Very close. It's kind of boiling right behind me. There it goes. There we go. Boiling while I'm stirring. That's what I call a full boil anyway. Reduce your temperature to medium. Set you a timer somewhere for 20 minutes. And then we're gonna put the meat in, crank up the slow cooker. See you back in just a few minutes, about well, 20 minutes. Welcome back y'all. This is on medium. It's about 15, I'm sorry, about 20 minutes later. And we're going to go ahead and put our cross-cut beef shanks into the liquid and get ready for the slow cook. Just making sure they get submerged. Get the meat in. All we got to do now, it's going to yell at me because I haven't switched it off a of sear saute yet. Now, uh, you want to leave this on vent, guys. Let me get this camera up there for you. In fact, it's so hot you can actually hear it venting right now. You hear that? All right, let's switch it over. Slow cook, low, start. It defaults to eight hours. That's fine. Um, this recipe needs six to eight hours. I would suggest eight if you can do it. Now keep in mind that just took me an hour. So that was one hour of prep time and that's why I started at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, so if you're going to do this kind of recipe, leave yourself enough time to get the proper slow cook. Guys, I'm going to leave you now for about eight hours and I'll see you this evening. Welcome back, y'all. It's been about, uh, I don't know, eight and a half, nine hours. We're going to go ahead and take the top off and see what she looks like. This is the first time the top's been removed since this morning. I can see the liquid has been reduced slightly. You can see the ring. So just sitting there, the liquid's been reduced. Let me get this lid out of the way. And let's get a spoon in there or something and so we can see what, what's going on. Oh yeah, well there you go. The meat's just falling apart in there. Clearly it's finished. Let's get it on a plate. Well there you have it. That is cross-cut beef shank cooked in a reduced red wine and beef broth with onions and garlic in the slow cooker. <laughs> Did you see that? It just peels apart. And it tastes about as amazing as you would imagine. If you like this video, 
Please subscribe to the channel. Leave me some comments. Click the like button for me. Click that bell for notifications. Leave some comments. Don't forget to check the description where I'll have the ingredient list and uh, some links to like Patreon and other stuff. I want to thank everybody for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you try to make it. I do, I do get a lot of questions uh, what are you having with that meal? With that I'm having mashed sweet potatoes and carrots and green peas which aren't quite ready yet. Thanks y'all.